Today we're going to talk about the generalized method of moments. This is a statistical econometric framework that's particularly useful for handling asset pricing issues. And as you can see, it's, as you'll see, it's very, very pretty at the same time. I want to start with a little background, the standard error of the mean. Uh, this will seem simple to you, but it reminds you of what the statistical questions are. And you'll also see that this basic formula underlies all of generalized method of moments. So standard error of the mean as a reminder. Let's let ut be a, a random variable. And I just took a random number generator. And you know, 5, 4, 8, 8, 2, that could be a sample of data, like a sample of returns that we've seen before. The, I'll use et, e sub capital T. That notation means the sample mean. The sample mean of ut is, in this case, 5.4. We also use the notation u bar for that sometimes. Now, the sample mean is itself a random variable. This is the key insight of statistics. Our world, we saw 54882. That's the data in our world with an average of 5.4. And we ask ourselves the question, well, how much of that was due to luck? How would that come out differently if we could rewind history and try it again? Maybe in another history, it's 37722. And in another galaxy, it's 510463. What, with, with averages 4.2, 5.6, how would the average vary across all different reruns of history or all different parallel universes? That number, the sample mean, is a random variable. Not in our world, we only see one of them. But it's, if we think about rerunning history over all sorts of different possible worlds, that's the statistician's question. That's the question of how much luck of the draw was there in, in what we saw. What is the distribution of the sample mean, even though it's a number in our world, across all these alternative worlds? Well, how do we answer that question? You've undoubtedly done this many times before, but it's a good reminder. The mean of the sample mean is the mean of this sum of random variables. If each of the random variables is 0, the mean of the sum is 0, the mean is 0. So the sample mean is, on average, correct. What's the variance of the sample mean? Uh, that's the interesting question. How much does the sample mean vary across all the different worlds? Well, that's the variance of a sum of random variables. The 1 over t can come out in front. So 1 over t squared times the variance of the sum of the UTs. Now, what do we do next? Well, now we need some assumptions. You can't learn about alternative universes without some assumptions. So the standard assumption we make is that the UTs are stationary and that they are uncorrelated over time. The covariance terms are all 0. Uh, if that's true, then the variance of the sample mean, how do we do it? Well, variance of a sum of random variables is the sum of the variances plus the covariance terms. The covariance terms are all 0. There's t of those terms. So that 1 over t squared cancels with 1t there. And we get that the variance of the sample mean is 1 over t times the variance of the random variable. Or the standard deviation of the sample mean is sigma over root t. The famous formula sigma over root t, that's where it comes from. That's pretty amazing that statisticians can, by looking at just how much u varies in our world and a little assumption, learn about how, it, how the sample mean might vary across all the worlds not seen. Well, that's great. And that's a reminder of what, the, what a variance of a sample mean is and how we calculate it. But there's a better calculation to make. Well, what happens if this u is stationary over time, but they are correlated? Lots of our data are correlated over time. Price dividend ratios, temperature, data is often correlated over time. Can we do that formula when the data are correlated over time? Sure. That's not so hard. Let's just run it through again. The variance of the sample mean then is 1 over t squared, so the variance of the sum. So there's t variances of the u's. And then there's all the cross terms, ut, ut minus 1, ut, ut minus 2. So do a little algebra. The variance of the sample mean is, uh, there it is, the sum t minus t over t, and then all the covariances terms. The variance term is the j equals 0, 1, and then you got all the covariance terms. Another way of writing that is let's take the variance term, so sigma squared over t, that's the old one we had, and then we add to that all the covariance terms. So it, you, you can do it even when things are correlated. And in fact, this, this looks prettier as t gets big, as we go to larger and larger sample sizes, then the variance of the use, these weighting terms go down, and you just have the sum of all the other covariances, or the variance plus twice the sum of the positive autocovariances. This object here 
Uh, we call it, in GMM, we call that S, the spectral density at frequency zero. Um, but it is just the variance plus the sum of the covariances. Now let's stop and admire what we've got. You've got a generalization of the formula sigma over root t for autocorrelated processes. What it's doing, if the process is very autocorrelated, you essentially have fewer data points than you think you have. So it's correcting for that fewer data points uh, effect. Um, as, a, as an example, uh, suppose that the errors are autocorrelated with an AR1. Then this is just the sum of the autocorrelations, which you can work out is 1 plus rho over 1 minus rho. I kind of like that. If I want to do this in practice, rather than having to estimate a bunch of autocovariances, uh, I just estimate 1. And then in place of our friend sigma squared over root t, I, uh, sigma squared over t, I have just this cor uh, correction with the autocorrelation coefficient. That's a nice way of doing it parametrically. That's called a non-parametric correction. So this looks small. I've reminded you what the sample mean is. I've reminded you how you calculate the variance of the sample mean. The beauty of GMM is that most econometrics that we will do in asset pricing, including what looks like very complicated things, instrumental variables, nonlinear estimation, so forth, just boils down to this. Thank you.